Elder. Um, and uh, it'll link you to this page where um, it'll do, it's your PHP info, you search for error, and it's gonna tell you the exact location of your error logs. Much like increasing your memory limit, if you don't know where your error logs are, you probably have a problem. In, this, in my case, I use MAP, so it gives me these handy shortcuts, but again, like you have the path there, so you can just find those error logs and, um, and uh, review them. If you work with a back-end developer and you have an error, usually the first thing they'll say is, what does your error log say? So um, we're going to produce an error right here. And if I refresh my page, I see this ugly error. And if I check my PHP error log, it's going to tell me exactly where the problem was and how to fix it. Um, so know your error logs. Find them on the status report page. Um, the other thing I'd say about the status report page and using that as the method of finding is if you're like me and I have um, Operate Dev Desktop and I have MAMP and I have a Drupal VM, um, if I find which error log I'm using by using that status report page of Drupal, I know I'm looking at the right one and not one of another stack that maybe is running at the same time or something like that. Um, cool. So um, this is a little bit out of the scope of Drupal, but I wanted to show some cool things with just the uh, Chrome dev, dev tools that I like. Um, so inspect the element, we're all used to that. Um, so I'm gonna do a little tour. So command shift P uh, will bring up this panel that you can do shortcuts the, um, to find things. In, and so what I use it most for is enabling and disabling JavaScript without searching through the UI. Um, you can take screenshots through there, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you can also um, search for specific files and open them using that, uh, that shortcut. Um, you can also, if you're using JavaScript, um, there's a lot of really powerful tools within the browser. Um, you can do watch commands, like you can see how a value changes as you refresh the page. You can set breakpoints, that's what the yellow yellow 22 is all about. Um, my, uh, my um, coworker Israel did a session earlier today on um, JavaScript debugging and, um, and it was amazing and there's tons more that can be done but um, I just wanted to give you a little hint of that. Um, a lot of these things could be a full day session of their own, unsurprisingly. So you should be familiar with your network tab. Um, if, you're, uh, if you do a lot of audits or a lot of performance stuff, you're probably in here a lot where you can see what files are being loaded, when, filter by certain things. Um, there is a performance tab where you can uh, run a report. This is gonna go for three seconds. And then it gives you um, the screenshots at different load times so you can see them individually. Um, it gives you all sorts of information about um, how much uh, data is being passed at different points. Um, there's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, these are uh, the links of the calls. And the memory tab um, will uh, just let you know what processes are taking up a lot of memory at that particular point in time. If you're into doing um, progressive web apps and dealing with local storage, uh, application tab will help you. And now the, the audit tab in um, Chrome has changed and for some reason the video blacked out. Um, <laughs> but it actually produces this really fancy audits now that aren't just like lists of check marks but like are like full page, like you could hand it to a client and they would think you were really fancy and it's just one button on Chrome. So, I don't know why it didn't record that part, but that's fun. So then I wanted to show, okay. So um, people are probably familiar with the mobile view in Chrome as well, where you can choose like your breakpoints and your, uh, well, your display port. Um, what might be less familiar is that you can switch between views with Command Shift D. Um, so it'll switch between the last two um, settings that you use for uh, those tools. Um, and then there's a brand new thing in the latest Chrome um, which will allow you 
uh, to block certain resources um, based on either a URL or uh, either parent URL or a specific resource. So in this case, uh, this um, theme is based on Bootstrap. I'm going to say block request domain. So um, it'll, uh, it's going to scroll up. And now, so the CDN that's delivering Bootstrap is now being blocked. And now, um, so like, like that Bootstrap JS file and that Bootstrap CSS file are blocked. And now I can see what it would look like if there was no internet. Like that's what my site's going to look like. So that's a good way to test like if there's a specific script maybe that's coming third party that's like breaking thing on something on prod, like things like that that might um, you might want to test locally before you get into full production. Oh, and um, just in general, like follow the the releases from Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. They tend to trace chase each other as far as like features. And so like there was a point where like Firefox had a bunch of stuff that Chrome didn't. And then now Chrome has all that stuff in there now. Um, so it just gets better and better. Um, so next thing, uh, the Drupal debug settings. Hopefully people are familiar with this now. And it's not that much of a surprise. Um, I put a link to the, the, the um, instructions we use for our training to get people set up. And um, it's a little more complicated than uh, it was in, in 7. Um, but once you do that, um, you will have these suggestions of which templates are producing which code on your page um, and also which theme hooks are in play. And if you want to take that to the next level, um, my other coworker, Arshad, um, developed this Chrome plugin called um, Drupal Template Helper. Again, I've, I've put the instructions in here. Um, if you follow them step by step, it works. If you don't follow them step by step, you'll be like, what are you talking about? Um, so there's the instructions. It's a Chrome plugin, so it has a little thing. Um, if you, I, I, here I use the actual name of my website, but um, I would just use a star.local. That's what I do now. So any website I have can use the template helper. And then what it gives you is this templates tab on the side. <coughs> so like, this is a little different, but like now you have over here where you can copy and paste and sort of like away from being in your um, your HTML comments section. And um, you used to be able to turn the HTML comments on and off. Unfortunately, Chrome changed its um, DOM, its shadow DOM. So now you have so now you would have to actually turn off HTML comments in Chrome in order for the comments to be completely gone. But I usually leave them on and keep the template helper as well. <coughs> cool. All right, Drupal console. Another weird video thing happened with this one. So Drupal console is uh, a um, uh, a plugin, a library that was uh, that is a, a based on a Symphony uh, library. That's just a bunch of helper functions for using um, Symphony, but now for Drupal content or Drupal specific. So let's see it in action. Um, this is going to be a bunch of my weird typing, um, but I'll, so um, so I can pr I can just type a couple commands. I can get a lot of statistical information about my Drupal site, um, number of nodes, etc., like that, things like that, um, and that's great. This is just me typing. <laughs> um, And, and it's the Drupal command, like that's its keyword, right? Um, and this one I'm going to do log poll, right? So this one is just going to be polling my database log, right? So right now it's showing that the cron um, last ran at this certain time. And if I had this terminal window up all the time and I went ahead and I ran cron or I create anything that's going to produce something in your watchdog log, um, it'll print it in your terminal. So that li that newest cron run appears in my terminal because I'm, I'm watching that, that function. Um, but what's really awesome, uh, so some, some other ones, um, so debugging libraries. Um, so if you use the libraries in Drupal 8, you know, you want a list of all the libraries that are in use uh, for your theme, you can use the Drupal debug function. 
or you can get specific about a particular library, in this case the user library, and this is basically all the YAML information for all the um, libraries that are associated with the user. And then the coolest thing about Drupal console is right now I'm going to generate a module. So I'm just doing Drupal generate module. And then it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. In this case, I just answered them all like yes with the default. So it's called my module. Um, they're like, what's the module path? What's it going to be called? I'm just like, call it what you want, blah, blah. If I put in things specifically, it's going to change information for me. And then it generates a list of, it basically generates the module for me. Um, if you're using object, um, so if you're familiar with the sort of object-oriented situation we're all in right now, um, and you're doing, dealing with stuff like controllers and plugins and the file structure and the complications of that, this will save you a lot of time and energy about because the, the namespacing is super important and all that. Cool. So um, you can find out. So there's a link to the Drupal console project in here. Um, um, it, so. It's uh, a Drupal console instance per Drupal site, just like now in Drupal 8, we're doing one Drush instance per site. So you would just do composer require Drupal slash Drupal console. Um, but you want to be able to like type that command at, at, like no matter where you are on your system. So there's one extra step of just making the, the command executable. And I put dire a, a link to the directions of that. So it's only one more step than installing anything else with Composer. Super handy. Okay, then there's a number of simple dumpers in, uh, available in Drupal 8. Uh, we're just going to run through them. So this is an alternative to using Kent. Um, there are a lot of these. Like I've, I've become like a collector of uh, functions. <laughs> Um, so DPR is one, it's the simple dump of the array um, and its contents. Um, debug is another one. It'll put that same information into your messages uh, uh, area. Var dump is a PHP function that you can use. Same idea, it's pretty ugly um, on its own. Um, but if you use your pre-tags, which again is a very PHP thing to do. Watching me type at the camp. Um, then it makes it a little cleaner. And the one that uh, Oh yeah, so um, if you do use xdebug, it'll, you, these dumpers will look a little prettier. Again, I use MAMP, so that's how I turn on xdebug. Depending on what you know, stack you use or what program you use, then you might use uh, something else. Um, and it just makes it these dumps a little bit prettier. It just gives you a little better syntax highlighting. Um, um, the last one, dump, gives you this awesome pretty one. So this is actually the Symphony Bar Dumper Library, which com if you get, if you use that Drupal console composer project, uh, it'll give you that those sets. So um, another thing in Drupal 8 is that, let me pause for a sec. Ah, no, bad computer. Um, is that the Functions you use in a PHP file, like the .theme file, may be different from what you use in a Twig template file. So I've sort of separated them out here. Um, so you can still use dump, which is actually a Twig function if you use it in a Twig template. And these are all just different wrappers around the same fun time. Um, in Twig, you can also use DPM, which will print those twig functions into the messages block, which is helpful when you're, um, uh, yeah, like when you try to like uh, do a dump into like a little tiny block that's like really small, it's better just to put it in messages so you can see it a little better. Um, and then there's the twig tweak model, which you need 
in order to use that same symphony library, the pretty one with the black background. Um, so if you use TwigTweak, which has a lot of other really helpful functions for the, um, front end developers, um, then you can use the Drupal dump function, uh, which will give you that same information in a dumper. Um, TwigTweak module has a lot of like helpers, like how to print out a field really easily or its value and all that good stuff. Um, so I just, again, a collection of where, where uh, all these functions come from. Um, some are Devel, some are from Core, some are from Symphony, etc. You get them all with Drupal. The only one you, uh, oh yeah, and just, um, I think people know this by now. Um, people are actually using Drupal 8 a lot more now. But, um, you know, if you're in a Twig template, you um, print your variable uh, with the two, with the print function. You use a dot to get its children. Um, and, but if you're um, trying to get a, um, a child that has that hashtag, it'll error out. So you need to put that in route quotes just like a regular array. Um, so, kids, hopefully, so I haven't been asking a lot of questions, bad me. Um, so, how many people are familiar with using Kit in Drupal 8? Oh, not that many. How many are most people still on Drupal 7, like haven't really touched Drupal 8? Yeah, only a few. So, what are the rest of you doing? What's going on? No. <laughs> um, so, the rest of you are using Drupal 8, but maybe not Kit. Drupal 8 and not Kit? Okay. All right, so I misread your, this crowd in completely. My apologies. I should have asked my my crowd warming questions in the beginning. Um, so, um, Kint is part of the Devel module. Um, so you have to use comp your composer required Devel, um, and Kint is a sub module of that. So then. Uh, you use Composer to do the download, so you can no longer do Drush DL, or you shouldn't. Um, and then uh, we're going to also get the um, search Kint module, which makes Kint a little more functional. Um, and, and this is basically how you're going to be downloading Drupal modules now. Like instead of using Drush DL, you're going to use Composer Require. If it's a dev specific module, you're going to use that dash dev uh, flag and then Drupal slash name of module. That's the pattern now. Whew. So, um, and then I'm going to use Drush to actually enable said module, which are Kint and Search Kint. These are sort of my everyday fun times. Um, so the only thing that makes Kint significantly different between, between um, the other dumpers I showed, like the DPMs and blah, blah, blahs, is that um, it gives you a lot of information um, about sort of the structure of the, of the project and the, um, and the methods you can use on different objects. Does that, that will make sense in a second. So uh, I'm kinting out my variables. I get this nice blue thing um, that you can see. Um, it's, it's very similar to the, you know, like what DPM used to look like. I have a search box at the top. That's what the search kit does. And now I've got these methods. Right, so these are the methods that I can apply to any um, of the, the, so like on my user uh, variable, right? So like I can print out user, but I can also use that method, that get account method to learn more about the user, right? So this is how, these are basically functions in uh, Drupal 8. This is how we um, get, uh, do things to our data and not just like find out their children in that tree. Um, and if you get into the object-oriented of it all, a lot of this makes a lot more sense, right? So there's no other way besides Kent that I know of, or apparently my coworkers know of, to get this information. Another um, thing with the search Kent module is you get these get path things. So you can just copy and paste these into your PHP. 
So if it's like a super long array slash object slash whatever, you don't have to remember its whole way down the tree. You can just copy that and paste that into your, your uh, PHP file and just change the name of the variable. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out about Kent, don't click the, the, the X, the, this plus sign on the side. Always click the full bar because the plus sign, let me just pause for a second. The plus sign uh, will open all the children, all the children down the path. And if you just click the box, then it'll only open uh, the direct descendants. Okay, so KSM will put it in the uh, in um, the messages uh, box again, um, and in Twig uh, it's similar. You do Kint in your page, your variable in this case page. I'm using page uh, for everything in this symbols. If I try to do KSM in the Twig template it fails. I get this error, right? Um, but if I enable the Devel module on top of Kint and I put the KSM inside the DPM or the Kint inside the DPM, um, then I can achieve the similar, the same thing as KSM does in the theme. Um, the formatting is off a little bit in, in 8.4. This worked fine in 8.2 and 3, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, one other thing. Okay, so um, of those who use Kit, how many have had Kit memory out on them? So hopefully this will help, help you. Um, so this is a Stack Overflow article um, that I also put the link up to in. And what this does is it limits the number of levels that Kent puts out so that it doesn't just like crap when you try to print out like a whole page or like a, especially like a paragraph page. So I put this, this code snippet in my settings.php um, and then I can just change the number of levels that's being printed out. So, uh, and if it goes too slow, it'll do depth too great. Um, of course, if I make it way too small, it's not gonna be useful, but that's a way to narrow down your, your scope so that you can get something that's usable. Um, one other thing I wanted to show that I think got cut off in the video is that these arrows on the side will open your, that particular part of Kent in a new window. Um, which is also helpful. So it kind of separates it. And you can also refresh the page and that window is not going to change. Okay. So this is just, does everyone understand the max levels, like what it does? I can move on. Yeah. Well. Okay. Time's running out. Yeah, we get it. Me. Um, again, I put in the um, use the search kit module because you get the search and you get the copy path thing, and that's awesome. Um, in templates, you can use Kent. In PHP files, you can use Kent and KSM. If you use Kent in combination with DSM, then you can print your Kent to a, 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 the messages uh, area. And for less memory, that link is here, and I'll post the links afterwards as well. Um, web profiler. This one's been around um, in Drupal for a while, but like it, every people are like surprised every time. And I kind of I used to sort of forget that it was around, but I've been using it more and more. Um, so web profiler is a, another thing that's part of the Devel module. So after you've already installed the Devel, um, you can see it in there. So it's one of the modules that are part of Devel. Then I'm going to use Drush to enable it. And now what it does is it creates um, this bar at the bottom of my page uh, that has lots of helpful information. It's going to do it again because bad editing on my part. So. <laughs> 
Um, so what's in these little bars of fun? Um, we can get information about the Drupal version, um, what Git commit we're on. Um, we, I like to get to my PHP info from here, clear a cache. Um, I know what PHP version we're running. Um, I can see what controller is on this page. Memory information, uh, stuff about the cloud, how many database queries, how long did the query take, what's the actual database that I'm using, who am I logged in as, um, how many views are on the page, um, number of blocks loaded and rendered, what forms are on the page, how many active modules are in my site or active themes, um, all the information about the config, and how many JavaScript and CSS files are running. I can also close and open the toolbar because it's annoying to have it there all the time. Um, so this is useful when you don't have the, the server access that you need and you need to find out some information. If they got Devel installed, you can actually find out a lot about the site really quickly. Uh, the other one that I use it for a lot is if there's a form on the page, like of course you can in PHP like discover the form ID, but like I like to just use it, my profile is right there. So that's another little helpful one. Uh, and then, so how many people are using Xdebug right now? Okay, good. Then I've done, I'm gonna do my work. I'm gonna convince you all in the next five minutes that you need Xdebug in your life. Okay, so this is how I feel about it. <laughs> Uh, so I really want to, um, so this has all been a ruse just to get you all to use Xdebug. Um, because I didn't use it at all in um, my Drupal 7 life, and once I started making it a part of my Drupal 8 life, my life got a lot easier, um, as, even as a front-end developer. So let's see what it does. Um, so first, enabling it. If you use something like a MAMP Pro or if you use Drupal VM, installing Xdebug is pretty easy these days. Um, I can't help you with every single setup you have, but pretty good. You also need a Chrome extension um, called Xdebug Helper. There's also a couple other ones out there, but this is the one I use. Um, in the settings for that extension, I'm going to just make sure it's looking for my particular IDE, which is PHP Store. And once that's set up, I'm going to make sure that my site is listening for Xdebug connection, because it has to talk to my ID. Xdebug is talking to my ID. My browser and my ID are talking. And my browser needs to know to listen, too. So I'm going to set this breakpoint in my code. That was what that red dot was. And then it pops open this little box at the bottom. Let's see. Let me zoom. Yes that um, tells me everything that's on my site at this point in the code, right? Like what all the variables are, right? So that's what this variables tab is. It tells me um, not just the thing that I'm specifically trying to work with, but any variable that's available to me at that point in the code. And you can see it's, it's everything, including global variables like the environment, the cookie. So I'm testing the copyright right now on this particular one. And if I wanted to always just, instead of looking through, scrolling through the whole list every single time, I can say in this little box on the side that's called watches, just show me copyright um, all the time, like specifically call out copyright. So it'll tell me the value of copyright at this particular point in the code. And if I move my breakpoint, and I push play, it's going to tell me um, what the new value of copyright is. And I can just keep doing that throughout. And I can be find out the specific point where things going right or wrong. Um, my ID is also giving me other hints about like page ID and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, and like I said, that you get also access to globals that exist, PHP version, et cetera, um, that might be useful. I can also step through the code, so I can say, like, where did this function even come from? Like, I don't know, like, where I am, do I care? I'm a front-end developer, maybe I don't. But if I wanted to, I could find out exactly where, and I can step into and out of the code using these little buttons, um, which is fun. Uh, and I can also return back to the code cursor. Um, one thing I didn't uh, get into this video, no, don't do it, um, is, um, there's also a watcher 
or an expression checker there. So like in that same place, I can pop up a window and just type in whatever I want and see how it validates. So like instead of like running, refreshing the browser every single time to see what it's gonna produce, I can just write the expression right then and there and find out what, what the data is. It's, at, it's this um, little button right there that does that, that expression evaluator. But I forgot to put it in the video this time. Let me make sure I got through everything. Whee! Yes, okay, we're really done for that part. Um, so that's how you do it in, um, in, um, in a PHP file. And one of the, the critiques or questions or concerns when um, Twig was coming around from the back end, people were like, we use xdebug every day. How are you going to xdebug a Twig file? Because a Twig file is not PHP. Um, what's the solution? So you can use um, uh, the devel breakpoint function inside, the, um, inside a Twig template to do basically the same thing. So again, I'm listening on both ends. I'm going to put in this devel breakpoint function, put it in my print statements. I run my debugger, gives me all my information. Main difference here is that all that data is in this context variable, right? Um, instead of just on the parent level. And it's giving me other information about the page as well. Um, and it opens up that debugger in a new, new window. So that is another one. Day-to-day -day use saves you a lot of time, makes life good. Yeah. Does that uh, have less of a chance of killing your memory, like that? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. Less. Of, I don't know uh, because it stops before it gets to. Uh, it's basically stopping the process, so it's not trying to load stuff that it doesn't already know about. So, like on Kent, it's like they had to collect it all and put it in the thing, and with the valve, with these, they're just. Uh, Send them right out. I'm running a long time. Okay. Wow. Um, so there used to be an xdebug module. You don't need to use that anymore. Just use uh, it's all in core now, or in the develop module. I'm gonna speed through the rest. Um, if you ever seen an error like this, anybody? This super helpful legal error. <coughs> just the. This is um, a PHP function that a lot you know, like my backend people will give you that will help you. Figure out what died. <laughs> um, so you just wrap your, your bad code or what you think might be the bad code and it'll tell you what error uh, was, was um, causing it instead of these catastrophic, like non-helpful error messages. So that's the code there. Um, there used to be, uh, this used to be a thing that people were passing around. You could use Xdebug with the, comp the twig files that get compiled, like in, in your, like the, the cached versions of it, but it's really hard to deal with and no fun, so not recommending that one. We're uh, going through it. Um, you can write directly to a file and then watch it. Um, so this is the snip snippet. Again, it's in, um, in uh, the notes. Um, and so I'm just printing my variable uh, to um, this file called file.txt. I have to run it for it to create the file. And then like it's, it's, put, it's putting that code into the file. And so I can also print out variables that way. And you can also have a copy of it. So this is not something I use every day, but like if you're debugging something, um, where maybe you're like using two, you've got two environments that you need to compare, stuff like that. Printing this stuff out to a text file can be useful. You can also tail the text file with um, the tail function. So I'll speed through this. So it, then in that case, it just keeps printing it out to my terminal every time it changes. So. That one is also a way to avoid memory errors because you're kind of like getting it out of the way of the, the code. Um, and those are the instructions. Um, you can also use the Drupal database as a storage place for this kind of information. Uh, I put this um, code snippet in here. Um, 
which you can use. And it's basically just using the Drupal log and you're just printing messages to the log. Um, unfortunately, um, in Drupal 8.4, um, it doesn't really like big variables, so like doing this with like the page variable, like it's too much, um, it tends to error out. So this might not be as helpful as it once well was, um, but it does store um, the, the data in the database. Of course, this is not something you want to do on a production site. This is something you would do locally. Maybe uh, you need um, in very specific instances where you you know debugging very specific things, like um, like an AJAX request or something like that. Um, but I kind of like the file better than doing it to the watchdog anyway. So this just takes through. So it'll print out either an array or the message. And then you can actually use this drush ws tail command to follow what happens in your terminal as values change. Um, and then there's the script there. Um, another thing that has gotten me with Drupal 8 is uh, caching. Okay, okay. so main thing here, um, if you go to the Drupal installer and you don't have opcache enabled, which is a PHP thing, it'll ask you to install, uh, to turn it on. It, um, by default, at least on my machine, holds your cache for uh, a minute. So like you're making changes, you're like, oh, I don't see my changes, and like you're going crazy. Um, but you can use this to um, turn it off. Of course, Drush CR, and you should know how to clear your browser caches. And then Drupal has many, 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 many layers of caching available. So if you're in that space, you might um, you should have, you should know how to deal with like whatever system you're in, like if Varnish is a factor or whatever. Um, and then um, your IDE. Um, I think that um, it's not fun to say, but I do think that you need an integrated development environment in order to develop in Drupal 8, which maybe wasn't the case as much in Drupal 7. Um, there are free ones like, I think Eclipse is open source and a couple other ones. A lot of us are using PHP Storm at my company because it has so many helper things for Drupal um, that I can't go into. Actually, I think there's a session on PHP Storm and Drupal 8 later on um, that it's just amazing how much I don't have to do because I'm using an IDE and specifically PHP Storm. Um, so you just let it kind of know that you're working on Drupal and it gives you a lot of help. Um, and you should also be using um, a, a code sniffer or a code hinter. Um, there are ones that are specific for Drupal that are available um, and you should be like integrating that with your IDE too. Again, it's just that thing of like, missing semicolons I don't have to look for them you know like all this stuff and then like it, am I using the right path to um, like um, access the function that I'm trying to use does it even exist in the, like all the it auto completes almost everything like all this stuff is available if you use these IDEs so I really recommend them all right so running out of time um, some of these debugging tools can use a lot of memory so you know it's a it, you have to make trade-offs um, and um, I think good tools and experience will make you a better developer. So don't be scared to use like tools that make you that like this is the stuff that the back end folks are using. And um, um, it just it's like oh they're not magicians. They actually just use something that gives them hints. Um, <laughs> um, there's a Drupal Twig Slack that um, is uh, pretty good for getting help and to help others. Like give as much as you get if you get in there. Um, it's not the Drupal Slack, it's a separate Slack instance just for the front end, uh, which makes it a lot, <laughs> it's, it's more focused and so I think it's a little easier to deal with. Um, and then um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, I work for at chapter three. Uh, no time for questions, but I'll ask you a question, did any, does everyone feel like they learned something? Okay, that's all I want. <laughs> This is, the video is being recorded. Uh, the URL for the so slides, they'll be on the on the section description. There will be a, um, a link to the slides underneath it. And I also tweet it out. So if you uh, follow me on Twitter, as soon as the slides and the videos are out, out I'll, I'll tweet about it.